Welcome to the Fresh Outlook Business Symposium. This is your host, Johnny G. We got a special guest today, um, basketball professional, Philippine superstar. They call him the Crunch Man, Passport. And uh, I guess hopefully throughout this video, we'll, we'll have some more um, um, monikers that probably people don't know of. But uh, <laughs> I've had the privilege to, um, to to experience his uh, his journey, you know, for, from the start and now first hand, first hand. Yeah, yep. yep. <laughs> and to the start, almost to the start. I would say to the start to where he is now, and uh, just give you, like I said, a fresh outlook because um, you know people don't see the journey, they don't see the grind, the sacrifice, the hard work that a lot of people in their professional business um, have. So this is a great, you know, insight and in depth analysis of um, what it takes to be successful and be professional in your industry. So um, with no further ado, this is Alex Kabagnot, um, you know, multiple PBA championships. And um, just to start off, Alex, just wanted to, you know, if you could tell people about your journey, you know, tell, tell us about yourself, what's your background, you know, where you came from and, uh, you know, um, so, you got, so if you could elaborate on that, that'd be, that'd be great. Oh, first and foremost, Coach Johnny, thank you for inviting me to your the Fresh Outlook Business Symposium. Thank you for the invite. Thank you for uh, thinking about me. Well, uh, you know, uh, my mom's actually here. She said, oh, hi, Coach Johnny. Your mom's here right now. She's Whoa. chilling. She goes, uh, she goes like, Coach Johnny, no, that's Coach Johnny. Uh, that's exactly, exactly how, how far back you actually, you, you were kind of humble about it. You were actually in the beginning stages. I, I remembered when I had a, I had a tough time with pressure and you taught me how to jab step and pull back. I don't know if you remember that. Yes, that was one of the back, first. Step yeah, step back. Cause you, cause uh, you know, a lot of, I guess, uh, AAU back then we played against, you know, a little bit quicker guards, quicker than me. And you taught me how to, I think that's the first thing you taught me when you joined, you take a step, jab, pull back two dribbles and explode, take a jab, step, come back. So that's actually, a long time ago, a long time ago, a long, <laughs> a yeah, long, very long time ago. Create separation, you know, yeah, understand yeah. where you at, left or right, hesitate, and blow by. I mean, that's, that's the name of the game. Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, I've been playing basketball. You um, Actually, for everybody that's uh, watching the Fresh Outlook Business Symposium with Coach Johnny, I've been playing basketball since I was 10. 10, 11, organized basketball with Hooptown, obviously with Finland basketball, one of the first uh, under the hoop town, the tutelage of Coach Johnny, Coach Jeff. And before that, I actually played multi, uh, a few sports other than that. I played baseball. I played some uh, flag. But I put all my focus in basketball. And uh, I'm here right now. It's my 15th year in the PBA. Uh, and, uh, you know, we got the whole COVID thing. So everything's at a halt at the moment. Well, I mean, just to kind of also um, uh, back up, reverse a little bit. I mean, where were you born, and um, where'd you grow up in LA? Uh, well, I was born in the Philipp I was born in Quezon City, Hard Center, uh, in East Ave. Uh, we resided in Fairview, Fairview, Quezon City. That's all the way. They call it Farview. If you're in the Philippines and you live in Manila, they call it Farview because it's far. It's still far now. And uh, I actually migrated to the States with my family in 1991. 1991, I was eight years old, eight, turning eight or turning nine. So it was a big, I mean, it was a bigger culture shock for my brother because he's five years older. You know, when you're, when you're in your teenage years, you get uprooted from one country to another. It's, uh, that's when the whole, I don't know, you would know more than this. This is the whole like gangster area, era of like, you know, Satanas PR. So we, we moved straight into Rampart, uh, Alvarado. Uh, right now, historic Filipino town. My brother went to Virgil. I went to Rosemont and then we migrated. We moved to Eagle Rock. Thank God. Thank God for my parents <laughs> for moving to Eagle Rock. <laughs> I, don't th I, I think I'd be banging right now. I think I'd, I would went to Belmont and I'd been a gang banger. But uh, uh, we moved oh, to <laughs> we moved to Eagle Rock, and I've been I've been. Uh, they got I've some gangsters. Glad. In Eagle Rock. There, there's some gangsters in Eagle Rock, but there's not no gangsters like if you're from if you're from like historic Filipino town in that time around Rampart and around all those areas. You were obviously you were in uh, one of those crazier gangs than the ones in Eagle Rock for sure. 
No, hey, shout out to all the gang members that I know is at the Nasa Eagle. I'm also. I know you guys. <laughs> I'm gonna put this. I'm actually gonna click this and put this on my IG, so I know they're gonna be watching it. So all the Satanas, all the all the OGs, uh, shout out to you guys too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just also put, also give some historic meaning of um, how we started the Philam Youth in in Los Angeles was because of all the you know all the all the, all the gang activity for from the, the Filipino youth. We started the Philam Youth trying to you know use basketball as a platform to get all the kids, all the at-risk kids into you know, more of a productive um, sport, which we love in, in the Philippines is basketball. And so um, if you talk a little more, like when I, if I could talk more about um, how we, Alice came in, you know, we, we try to, um, I would say, gather the best um, players in that league and then we created Hooptown. And Alice was one of yeah. the first, um, you know, players of Hooptown in 1995. So kind of like, man, it's 2020 now. So it's almost 25 years ago. And uh, I just remember, um, you know, he had a lot of skill, but, you know, obviously he need, needed mentorship. Um, then this oh, is yeah, a lot, a lot of mentorship. <laughs> yeah. And then, um, you know, so he kind of like paved the way in terms of, um, you know, I had experience in the late 80s, early 90s with playing the AU ball and uh, playing against, you know, the likes of, you know, Stephon Marbury, Ron Mercer, I mean, big time college players like in my Shea in my, Cotton, right? I remember you were talking about Shea Cotton. You used to play against him, right, back in the day. In yeah, AAU we, ball. Yeah, we were on the same circle, so I mean, AAU ball wasn't as um, watered down as it was, you know. So um, we played against like man every weekend, every week, you know, just exposed to like high level talent. I think it helped us, and that was kind of the the blueprint for for Hooptown and Philam Youth uh, to to get exposure. And obviously, our goal was to. Actually, our, goal, our number one goal is to, to get the kids to high school, you know, the Filipino-American in, in at Los Angeles to, to get them competitively in high school. And then, you know, um, we, we was fortunate enough that, you know, Alex went to college and then, you know, um, it just kind of um, blew, blew up from there. Um, so, Alex, um, talk about, like, role models. We kind of, um, you know, we kind of touched upon it. I mean, you have any role models growing up in, in, in the youth to high school, college, and now to professional, if you could elaborate on that more. Well, well, I mean, bro, I mean, a lot, a lot of people know this, but yo, I mean, I mean, a lot of people do know this if they're in my circle, but you're one of my, uh, actually, you're still my mentor now. Uh, you're one of the people that actually guide me. And to this day, I think it was two years ago, I was doing drills with you. You were teaching me some behind the back, between the legs, hopping over cones, which I still use to this day. And uh, it got my level of performance higher. But when I was younger, I, I was obviously looking up to you. Uh, you were, I mean, you got two rings from, from playing, what, football and basketball, getting two CIF rings. So obviously that was something. Uh, Mark Giwa was one of my, the guys that I looked up to also since he was from Eagle Rock and he was older. Uh, my brother, my brother and my cousins, you know, all these guys paved the way for me. I, I don't think I could... Uh, ever even think about my journey without you guys you all the people that I was looking up to and just copying and just emulating you know all the all the little things especially like you know little things that you would teach a kid that you think that it's just going to go in and in one ear out the other like 90 percent of the things that went in and out my ear when I was a kid but those 10 percent that it did stay it was uh it's it's still in me today, and it's one of the core values that I have. So uh, there's a few uh, my parents, obviously, but uh, basketball wise, basketball wise, I just I was looking up to the local guys. The local I used to play a lot, and it's funny you say this, Coach Johnny, because I remember uh, Coach Jeff and all my high school coaches. They used to say, "Don't play at the park." My Filipino, my Filipino layup, my ganon, ganon, jan. But you know what? I can't even, you know, if I have a kid, I would love for him to play against older guys, whoever it is, kind of Filipino, whatever. And I think the people at the park at that time, they they showed me how to be competitive, how to stay on the on the court. I mean, maybe going back to it now, it's not the best competition, but when you're only 12, 13, 14, and you're playing against guys that are 18, 19, 20, I mean, it's everything to you, right? It's everything yeah, to you. So, yeah. <laughs> so I know they're not gonna. People are gonna be like, "Oh my God, we should say Yosemite." No, yes, I did play Yosemite all the time. I don't know how watered down the competition is there now, but for me, as a young kid growing up, with uh, lack of speed and quickness, and 
uh, gulang, which is a little uh, caginess that I had, a lack of what I had. So I learned it from those Eagle Rock Park and Yosemite Park, which is weird. <laughs> Uh, and now, so kind of, um, kind of going back to some Filipino slang, uh, I hear a lot about Ido, Lido. I mean, it, for people that aren't Filipino or, or don't understand the whole like um, kind of term, well, I mean, if you describe, what, what does that mean? Because obviously we're in the whole world. Uh, <laughs> Ido is just, uh, it's just to, you know, they're just saying that they're giving you some love, you know. It's just, a, it's, I use it as a term of endearment. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I know people look at it like they look too much into it. Idol and Lodi are the same thing. They just put it backwards. So uh, it's just one of those things. It's just a term of, term of endearment. I mean, I know when I get called Idol, it's never, I always take it as a positive, even though something negative comes after it. But I always look at it as a positive. I mean, that's just for somebody to come approach you and, you know, have that little bridge to you you know I, and um that's the best way i could i could i could uh explain it it's just a term of endearment that's all it yeah, is. yeah um kind of going like a little more about like you know uh, role models aspirations i would consider you maybe like second generation philam to to penetrate the you know the pba professional scene i mean just on top of my head og og philam pioneers such as like nick belasco asi tulava Danny Siegel, obviously Mark Figueroa and, and Jimmy, right? I mean, those are the first, I mean, I would consider them, I'm probably missing a few, but, um, you know, how, how do they pave the way into, into your generation? That's number one. And then two, the new generation of, of, of Philan Ballers. I mean, how, how's, how's, what's, your, um, what's your description or I would say thoughts about that? Well, I mean, those guys did pave the way. They, they, they challenged the rules. They made they they challenged they they changed litigation from somehow some point or another. I think the last time before back in the day, I know that's weird we're to say. Back in the day, you could just go to the draft if you were born in the Philippines. If you migrate, if you have Filipino blood, you just go straight into the draft. You get drafted. But I think since after my I was the last person to actually do that in 2005 because Mark, Jimmy, and all these guys paved did that you know, direct hire, it was so much stuff. So, you know, I can't thank them enough for the stuff that they've done. They've, they've built awareness to, I know people are going to say, Filipinos are Filipinos, it's the same thing. No, it's not the same thing. If you're a Filipino from New York, you're different from the Filipino from LA. So imagine the Filipino from the Philippines in like Manila is different from the Filipinos in certain so it's a totally different culture it's a totally way different lifestyle and they actually you know just paved the way for us to see see the different things the different eye-opening things that you know sometimes when a person is going to get here from i don't know let's just say wherever wherever they're going to come from i know there's a lot of filipino ballers right now but they're going to come to the philippines it's e a little easier now because obviously of social media and you know, the internet and stuff like that. But back in the day, there was only like Yahoo instant message, like web chat. That's <laughs> all we had. We yeah. didn't have like, we didn't have all that. So I had to learn the lessons from Mark, from Jimmy. He's my coach now, from Jimmy, from like guys that like Sonny Margate, like all those guys that had to like pick their brain. Like I had to, you know, pick their brain and, you know, their struggles. I, I, embrace their struggles just like it was mine and then hopefully I could pass it on to somebody and hopefully they don't go through that struggle but if they do at least you know that's just part of the game and it's it's not just you they're dealing with I mean the people from the past <coughs> have been dealing with it too yeah, so, so you, very thankful so you can talk I remember, um, I remember I was fortunate enough to be there in the Philippines actually when you got drafted 2006 oh I believe 2007. yeah 2005 and then 2005. I guess that in 2005, damn. And then so, so now I remember when you got drafted. I'm like, man, this is a business. Like it's a straight business. No more like you're not youth and you know college. I mean, you know, kind of, you know, experience you going through college. And then I'm talking about the business of basketball. I mean, what um, what's the PBA model versus obviously the NBA model that that you see a difference? And then how is it you relating to say your your, your actual team management? I mean. What's the difference between that and then, you know, we experience in college, if you could remember? Oh, it's, 
it's not even night and day. It's a different universe. It's not even night and day. Uh, in the United States, I don't think you could give money to players. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I, don't, I, I totally don't know, know the rules NCAA, anymore. It's NCAA, NCAA rules. NCAA, NCAA rules, you can't. But in the Philippines, I hate to say it. I mean, there's allowances that go around. I mean, obviously, certain things like that, allowances and a little bit depending on they probably have a salary now. I don't know. <clears throat> I'm sure they do. And that's just the difference right there. It's just night and day. You know what I'm saying? Right then and there, that's the difference. And that's not even the pros yet. Once you get to the pros and you're dealing with – there's no free agencies. Obviously, there's it's, it's unrestricted free agents. It's restricted free agents. And that's just how it works. I mean – you know, you got the higher ups that's been in the league for such a long time, and they, and I feel like they know the culture, how things should go, and it's totally different. I mean, it, I mean, I want to say your rookie year is definitely your first two years is definitely uh, an eye opener, to say the least. And you'll you'll experience things that are different. You know, you know, contract situations. Uh, I remember my first contract; it had a performance base. My my first contract in Santa Lucia had a performance base. And for me to get, imagine I'm coming out of college where they just say you just have to win to having something in your contract saying like you have to be, you have to be the top three in assist or you have to be assist to turnover ratio. You have to do this and this. And then as coming into a rookie and you're just trying to fit in, but you're also thinking about your longevity and you're also thinking about next year's if I'm going to get 50% increase or am I going to get 20%, 30%. So all these things are playing in your head, but I'm very fortunate that that guys like Dennis Espino, uh, Marlo Aquino, Kenneth Derembez, all the guys that are veterans or all the guys that experience it. Because hey, first time to Sakha Junior. That was my first yeah. time coming from the States. That's my first time. But oh, that's, that's the practice here. So you totally have to adjust. And sometimes the adjustment period, as you know, you know, you would know best. But the adjustment period, sometimes it comes in just a month or two. But sometimes, you know, for late bloomers, it comes in like a year. So I was kind of in the middle. So I was adjusting. But, you know, one thing I tell the people from the States when they come here, don't think about the States now. No more States. Like if you're coming here from a college, from the States, from a college, a master's or like a D2 in the States, leave it there, leave it there. Just bring your work ethic here and all the stuff that you learned, but don't always, don't go like, oh, this is what I learned, dita, 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 dita. No, there's no more now. There's no more now. Like what we're gonna do here is totally, it's a different universe. So might as well be an open book, be kind to your superiors, uh, you know, there's a there's a saying in Tagalog. You have to, and what I want Phil Ams to know, it's called Pakisama, and Pakisama is just getting involved. Like, don't be the outcast. Be just submerge yourself in the culture, submerge yourself in the basketball culture, and everything is gonna be all right. But that's the thing. It's just you know, some people fight it. You can't fight it because the the culture here will win a hundred times out of a hundred. You know what I'm saying? You can't fight it. You talk about a lot on um, you know inclusion in terms of uh, Phil Adams inclusion into the league um what do you see obviously with the with the, these new generation of Phil Adams entering the PBA and um I mean how's it going in that, in that aspect uh there's a lot of uh there's an influx of Filipino Americans and not just Filipino Americans but Phil Canadians and uh just Phil international um uh, Players coming from all over the place. They understand that, you know, the Philippines is a is a place to be. It's you might as well might as well use that your your lineage. You know, this is I hate to say it, but this is my NBA. You know, I, I mean, that's the best thing I could put it. I mean, if you're coming from a D two, D three, mid major D one, or even a D one in itself, and you're trying to figure it out if you want to go to like another country or not. I mean. Why? Why? Why do that? I mean, there's, this is a Filipino, this is a basketball crazed country, and uh, they love it out here. And I think they noticed that they they noticed that, and they took account to that. And there's a lot coming down. 
Um, in terms of social media, I know that um, when you came in the league in 2005, um, I mean, fa actually Instagram and, and, and Facebook was kind of developing, but in, to, a, to a, where it's now, um, how's it changed your relations with not only your team, with the community, but with your, yourself and, 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 and the community? Well, I mean, I've actually was in the, the transitioning phase of me coming in here in 2005. And as you could tell, there's not a lot of YouTube clips of my Santa Lucia days. You know, yeah. it just, it's, just, it's, just not, uh, it's just not available. Uh, and all of a sudden you go through the whole Facebook, then you, you've done the Facebook Live, you could interact more with your fans. And then Twitter came along around 2000 and something, or the later, late, latter part of the decade. And it just boomed, you know. Uh, I think the Filipino, uh, the Philippines is top five countries that use Facebook uh, in the world. And I think uh, our traffic, Filipino traffic and Facebook is abundance. And obviously when you mix that in with basketball, it's just going to be crazy. It's just insane. So uh, it's changed drastically for the better. But uh, also, you know, you get to know certain players from everywhere also. I think as a coaching aspect, you don't just go by the word of mouth. You could actually, like, with all these Facebooks and all these things, you could actually scout them without getting film. You could just scout them by the social media stuff. So it's changed drastically now, by far. Now, now come and talk about, um, like, youth basketball, the business of youth basketball. I mean, you're, you're – in the Philippines versus a, in, in, the, in the U.S. I mean, you've kind of experienced both. Um, and if you're talking to like the youth basketball player, you know, looking up to you, um, can you just like kind of talk about like, what's a good say matrix of like practice and training versus games? And then also, also what are things that the public don't see that you need to really focus on with your game? And, you know, kind of in that aspect, like what's the percentage of what you need to practice on, train, and then obviously um, how many games you play, you know? And then obviously you can talk about obviously now in the Philippines and then when you played when, as a youth in, in the U.S. and in L.A. when we were doing the whole travel scene, um, what's your recommendation or what's your, your outlook on that? Well, uh, in my opinion, in my, in my humble opinion, and I coached last year's NBTC. Uh, we actually, Jalen Green was on the other side. He was coached by Chris Chu, uh, Charles Chu. Chris Chu's brother, I think it's a blue team. And I coached the all-star team with coach Chris Govina. And we ended up beating uh, Jalen Green's team. But I saw the, I think there was a U.S. team that came from, I don't know, it was a selection of U.S. players. And I had a few selection, I had a few players that was in the U.S. selection on my all-star team. And what I could say what the difference is, is just, uh, just keep playing. Just keep playing. I think there's no rule. I, I don't want to say there's no rules. Maybe I just don't know of any. Maybe I'm just ignorant to the fact that I don't know any of the rules of how many times they could play. But I know in the States when I used to play, we didn't play year round in high school or like, yeah, they would travel ball. But the players here, they're training with their team. Like that regiment is 10 months, 11 months out of the year, 10 months out of the year. And I know when we used to play, it would be like I would go to my high school team and then I would go with uh, Hoop Town, right? We would yep. do the whole Hoop Town circuit over the summer and it would end up to being like, what, six months out of the year that I played basketball, probably with six, seven months, if that, with the high school season, then the summer. So it's just six. But, I mean, here I think they're, they're just playing a lot more basketball. Yes, in the States, obviously, the some, you know, you can catch – I've noticed that, I mean, not everybody's Jalen Green. You know what I'm saying? Not everybody's that guy from Virginia where he won a national championship. Those are two. But you got to understand, out of those two, there's like 100, 100 or 200 or 300, 400 kids that are not like that. You know what I'm saying? So they got to play more. They got to just play more, get more reps in. They got to get more reps in. And I don't know how to – I don't know – I don't know how to do that, but in my opinion, just just play, just just play basketball everywhere, anywhere. I I know as a as a as a AAU head program for yourself, and obviously I 
I, I am one of the also co-founders of another AAU program and you yourself is an AAU program. I know that they try you. I know that it's a business that you should try to stay in one team in one team. And for, for a lot of purposes, a lot of purposes, not just business, but a lot of purposes, but as a person that you're asking, I think for players, they should play anywhere, everywhere, you know, strike at any time because, you know, you're trying to cut the deficit, the disparity level of getting your reps up. Yeah. I know I kind of put you in a, in a tough position here because yeah, no, you have an AAU program yeah. and I know all AAU program, Hoop Town's yours and the one I'm with, Edge Basketball, it, it, it's just like that. It's just like that because of the business aspect, because of that business aspect. But since you're asking me as a, as a coach, like who would I recruit for if, if, if Coach Bo Parasol was to ask me who would I recruit between two players, I would recruit the player that has that looks like he's more refined in playing. Yeah. And the only way you get refined in playing is actually playing. Yeah. So, yeah. so well, in, ter in terms of practice and training, obviously, you know, I mean, um, I mean, in the in the U.S., obviously, I mean, I don't know how it is in the Philippines, but um, you know, you see, there's a lot of kids playing on different teams. I mean, I mean, it is what it is, right? You don't, as a coach, you don't control. Um, can't, can't, can't. The kids, but you know, um, but there is a concern about you know are they are they are they taught the right way? Are they training the right exactly. way? Exactly, exactly. I agree, one hundred percent. I think that's the main concern in terms of like youth basketball because now AU basketball, travel basketball in general, it's like I said, it's watered down. It's just like the park. You know, versus when I first started, it was only maybe like four or five teams. When you when, when you when you were playing. It, you know, it was it's kind of similar, and it, you could tell where the whole you know business of basketball was going to. So, um, also, can you talk about a little more about parents? You know, because obviously, parents is a huge um, influence when kids are you know first starting basketball into high school, and obviously, mm -hmm. it kind of fades away into the college because there's no control anymore in college, and, and exactly to a degree. But you know, I mean, you're experiencing your experience from you know, when you started to now when you're professional. I mean, any words of wisdom to parents that, you know, um, should, they, should they be heavily involved, someone involved, and how should they, you know, behave? Because obviously that's important too. Well, they should, first and foremost, parents should behave accordingly through the rules and guidelines of what they're going into. Like, for instance, they're going into your program, there's rules and guidelines, and there's things that have to be done, so everything has to work accordingly, not just for them, but for the whole group for everybody else in that organization. So first and foremost, they gotta, they gotta just go through those guidelines. As a parent supporting, they, that's how they should support their kid because obviously you're gonna, you know, obviously there's some monetary funds being transacted and you don't wanna waste that by being that parent that oversteps their boundaries, you know, because obviously you're putting your, your kid in that program because you trust the coach, you trust, what they're about and you want to get the most out of it and you actually want to set an example for your kids to obey because you know basketball I mean at this point of my stage even though I'm 37 you still got to obey rules you still there's still things that you, you still got to be disciplined and one of the ways to be disciplined is obeying certain rules and guidelines uh, another thing is they should just uh they should encourage encourage them to play get some shots up maybe maybe don't put it to the coach as much as I mean, obviously the coach has a structure, but there are certain things that sometimes at team practice that you can't get from individual practice, maybe with your, uh, with your kid. Maybe he wants, I mean, for me, as, as simple as 100 free throws a day is a huge thing, you know, and that's how you could support them. Just those little tedious things that need to be done, just like in basketball, everything is so tedious, but it just has to be done. And, it, and the bigger picture may lead it may become like a championship or a scholarship or something like this but none of those big things it all has to come from little tedious things and maybe th that parent right there can support in those tedious things you know yeah you touched on um you know like Jalen green uh kay clark is playing at virginia you know you have remy yeah. martin remy martin who's at a uh, asu they're phil, phil Ams, and then you know jerry lucas of oregon state now they have a resume, obviously, right? I mean, they, they came up the ranks in, the, in youth basketball, and obviously, you know, the Philippines is the option. And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, there's a lot of also going on in terms of um, parents saying, "Oh, I want my, my my kids to to go play in the Philippines," but you know, 
but and you also t- talked about it, you know, how you recommend players. You know, if someone comes comes in with a resume that they play college ball, even if it's at the JC level, J- D3, D2, D1, uh, versus Plus, someone who never, like, like barely played high school and then they're trying to go to, you know, the, the, the Philippines. I mean, I mean, what's your, what's your, what's your opinion? What's your thoughts about that? Because obviously you got to have a resume, you know, in basketball. You got to have a resume. I mean, I'm a coach. Uh, I mean, if I'm going to, you know, pick a player that, never play college ball in the United States where, you know, you're playing against non, non Philams and then, and then you're, you're, you have a successful, successful team. I mean, that speaks, you know, volumes. Of course, um, of course, so of course. Any, any thoughts about that? You know, cause um, you know, you, you have to kind of, for youth basketball players, that's your goal. I mean, you know, and I think, um, what's that one seven footer? That's uh, Kai, Kai Soto. That's coming. Kai Soto, yeah. He he's mm-hmm. training now in the United States, so it's kind of like it's opening up a whole new line of thinking, you know. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, first and foremost, to all the players that are playing D one, uh, man, go for your goal. Like, if you want to make it to the league, if you if you want to get into the NBA, do it, do it, do it for do it for yourself first and foremost. Do it for your family and do it for the the people. That are just rooting for you, rooting for rooting for you just to get there. But now for them to go to the Philippines and think that it would be less of a caliber for them because they didn't make it to the NBA and they think it's going to be a different story because obviously basketball is not what you fight with in the Philippines coming from another country. You know, it's the lifestyle. It's, it's what are you going to do when – you want to go to practice? It takes 15 minutes to get there, but with traffic, it's 45 minutes. Like, do you want to get? Do you want to do that? Are you about that life? Are you about like you know, waiting for a grab for an hour just to get like 30 minutes of court time? Are you about that life? Like you got to really, it's you got to check yourself at the door and be like, yo, this is a new experience for me. For me to flourish in this uh, in this life in the Philippines. And I'd even mention basketball. I just said in this life in the Philippines, because the better your life is, the better the outlook you see how your life is, the better you play. It's not the other way around. It's not like the better I play basketball, the better I, the better my life is. No, the better your life is with your spirit, with God, with your family, and with just all the things that are combined, then you play better basketball. So you got to really accept that. Like, Because, you know, I mean, we both know, and you've been here, you know, it's a, it's on a Friday. That ain't no, that ain't, that's not for nobody. That's, you know, he's, I don't do anything on a Friday, let alone a Saturday. I mean, you can't, I mean, it's traffic. I mean, yeah. are you about that life? If you want, yeah. like, I know, I know sometimes you could be the best basketball player. I don't know where to shoot. Where are you going to shoot? Where are you going to shoot? Where are you going to work out? You don't know. Your agent just dropped you off. What you going to do? What yeah. you going to do? You ain't going to do it. Like, there's no pickup games here. You can't play in pickup games. You don't know where to play. It's not like you could just go to 24 and play pickup. Nah, you really got to, if you're going to come to the Philippines, you really got to escape the thoughts of the states. Escape. Don't. Submerge yourself in the culture here. The better you submerge, the faster you submerge yourself in the culture, the faster you realize that this is my culture too. This is what I'm going to live. This is what I need to be. The better you'll play. Not the other way around. So... Not even basketball, because you know those guys are already good. Like you mentioned, a lot of guys that's probably going to go to the league and obviously try to make a shot in the league. So I'm just glad when they get here, I don't have to guard them. <laughs> yeah. What about the, what, what about those kids that um that don't have the the gifts, obviously to to make it to a high level of college, but then you know they're playing D three, D two. You know they're coming out of I mean they're coming out of high school and they're like man play college in the, in the Philippines. I mean is it the same same advice? Same. Right. Same 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 advice. Uh, you could be a really good. Uh, we we both know that there's some there's some D two players or JUCO players that you know that could have made it to D one, but they're just grades. They're just situational, you know, grades, uh, just all these things. It's, it's just you know, it just it just never happened for them to go D one. But that doesn't take away they're a good basketball player. And what you did in your past when you get to the Philippines, yeah, you could look back, but your past laurels won't get you nowhere here. And you have to you have to dive in and have an ethic that people could notice you about it. There's some there's some players here that came from 
D2, D3 that's been here for a long time, junior college. There's some guys that I know that came to the PBA that played Division One, and they're not here no more. I yeah. mean, it's not what you did before. It's what you're going to do now. How are you going to adjust? How could you figure things out? And then basketball will be better for you. So I think, I think that, I mean, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, I, I, I think that's, that should help. That's, that's how it should be. But, you know, that's just my opinion. <laughs> so what's next in store, man? I mean, you're kind of at the tail end of your career, you know, and uh, I mean, what's the, what's the next chapter? You know, I mean, uh, is basketball still in your, in your, in your future? I mean, do you have any, you know, like things you want to get into businesses, Maybe I don't know, um, you know, the hobbies, you know. Um, oh, of course, of course. <laughs> in the Alex Magnot book of uh, of journeys, of his journey. Uh, <laughs> uh, my journey as of right now is uh, I have a. Uh, I'm I'm very fortunate that San Miguel has has actually blessed me with with a brand new contract, and uh, I'm I have three more years, thirty six more months to think about my next journey. As of right now, I'm just gonna dive into, I'm just gonna dive into the next 36 months. This is gonna put, I mean, obviously, this COVID thing, you know, put a, put a halt to everything. But uh, after that, I think I'm gonna just take a break from basketball, take a break from working, take a break from everything else, and just. Uh, I remember you used to tell me back in the day, Roth IRAs, uh, insurance. I used to tell me that all the time. My brand. And how I should, and how I should take care of my brand, how I should uh, do do coaching and all that stuff. And every single time I came to you, you always been so helpful for me. And you know, and just like how I was a kid learning how to step back dribble was, I always tried to put that in fruition to actually do what you were telling me to do because I know you always wanted me to be not think of the now. You always wanted me to be like. I, I think it was you. It was actually you that told me that you should always work backwards. That's why you get insurance, right? You nope. should always work backwards. Always work backwards. Always work backwards. And and I think I've been doing an okay job working backwards. <laughs> I've been having you to guide me. So uh I just been following your footsteps with, you know, uh certain businesses on the side like real estate, farming, stuff like that. Because of your tutelage and everybody else you know, everybody else from their advices and they just want the best for me. And, you know, all I do is follow. All I do is follow and I learn, I follow, then I learn. And then I just uh, try to master what I'm doing at the moment. So after basketball, I, I think I'll just be chilling for a little bit, enjoying, uh, uh, enjoying my coaching? family, what enjoying my kids you? for a moment. <laughs> what about coaching? I mean, you, 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 um, I mean, you know, like you currently were like with you, the UP coaching staff. I mean, is that is something that you want to do or see yourself? Oh, doing? It, uh, it's something that it's a passion of mine. It's a passion of mine, especially, especially like having guys like uh, guys like yourself, guys like older guys right now that actually helping teach the younger generation. It's always been a passion of mine. It's going to be my sixth year. UAAP's canceled. This would have been my sixth year coaching for the UA for UP in the UAAP, but. You know, uh, maybe uh, maybe basketball and I will take a little break, take an LQ, yeah. a love, uh, lovers quarrel, uh, no, lovers quarantine, lovers <laughs> quarantine from each other. We'll yeah. take a little break. It'll be a little bit difficult for me because I know I do all these things with uh, assistant coaching, but I know my my passion is still to play. I still I still to play to compete, and I know when that's gone, it's gonna be a little bit difficult. I know I'm preparing myself like what you always told me. Just prepare yourself for for a future always look don't look at now look at the look at the future and uh i'm always i'm you know this whole quarantine right now i haven't really shot a basketball in the last month and it's just like maybe this is how it would be for me in the retirement stage of my career and it's quite, it's quite difficult to, to swallow it's quite difficult to swallow especially when that comes but hopefully i'll better prepare myself till that day comes <laughs> um, so lastly, I mean, any, any words of wisdom and, and this goes to a three prong, um, words of wisdom, um, um, kind of advice, not only to youth basketball players, college players, and also to like current, you know, PBA players in the league that just started or about to get drafted, any words of wisdom or advice that going forward that, that, that could help them? Cause obviously, 
you know, they need a fresh outlook. And then so that that's something people need to, to hear and, you know, um, he too. Well, I'm going to go down the categories. Uh, I think for, I think all categories that you mentioned, to have a fresh outlook from everything, <laughs> you need to have an open mind. You can't say, this coach taught me this and I'm so in love with this coach or I'm so in love with my ways that I can't, I can't like accept anything else. It's going to be hard for me to accept things else. That, that whole psych, psyche will not get you anywhere. If you want the fresh outlook, you need to have a fresh mind. You have to have like a, a mind that's like, hey, that might not be the best thing for me, but I know there's little parts and pieces I could turn into a positive that I could get. And I could get positives from different types of people, different types of mentorship, tutelage, all that stuff that they could get bits and parts and pieces with. So I just had to have an open mind. Technically, you gotta get your shots up. You gotta get your shots up. If you're a kid and you're not out there shooting your jump shot, shooting your one pull up, one dribble pull up, two dribble pull up, and you're not mastering certain spots on the court, do that, do that. And that's the same advice for me for me going forward to the PBA players coming in or the college players coming out. I know when you're in college, you're going with a certain type of talent versus their talent. But when you get to the pros, pretty much everybody has a certain, ta- uh, everybody has the same talent, you know? You know, everybody has, everybody can shoot. Every, it's just the chagat, you know? You just have to have that grit of the determination of, I'm just going to shoot 300 shots today regardless of what I'm going to do. You know, yeah. you just, I'm just gonna, I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to get, like, maybe I'm just going to go off the pick and roll today for a whole hour, three times a week. And then the next, and then the, the other three times a week, I'd get, like, 400 shots. So if you just do that, you're just consistent, consistent and have a fresh mind and just open to criticism, I think you'll go pretty far. I think you'll go pretty far, you know. You won't, I think I learned, I was reading something, uh, the universe will... If you don't fight for anything, the universe will let you keep it. If you fight for original, if you fight for something bland and something mediocre, the world will let you keep it. They'll let you keep the bland. They'll let you keep the, the basic. But if you fight for something more, I think that'll be, be that'll be a lot better in your in your case. You know what I'm saying? So just just uh, the chagat. I think I think if people hear anything in this fresh outlook, you just have to have chagat, open mind, and just have a better fresh outlook if you have those two things. <laughs> and lastly, um, like, I mean, you, 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 you're like a tail end of your career. I think in business, a lot of people want to have long, long careers and be successful. I mean, is there a secret to your longevity? Um, and then you can talk about it. It doesn't have to be anything particular, but what keeps you going, you know, like the longevity and, and in terms of like, you know, like not only like your, the physical, the mental, the faith, what's the, what's the secret, man? Oh, well, you touched upon it. Uh, I, I actually, um, I give my faith and everything I have to uh, the Lord above, and I just put everything I have into my relationship with Him, and everything that He gives, I'm just open to it. I'm open that it's in His will, that I'm here, I'm in this position, I'm in this position because that He put me in this position. I didn't do anything that, anything, I didn't do anything. I just listened to the older people ahead of me and I just prayed to God and why we're doing this interview and all we're talking about these accolades and these times I've had, all those times I've had with you, it's because of him. And I understand that. And I understand that it's, it was never me and just reinventing my, and on the, on the flip side of that is the more that I see that, the more I, I take the little time I have left, and I just try to make the most out of it to try to, the little time I have left, I just try to reinvent myself. Like, uh, you know, I've been vegan for the last five years, plant-based. Uh, I've, I'm in my college weight right now. Uh, actually, I almost got to my high school weight at 165. And, you know, just reinventing yourself at certain things. Uh, I think I went to you in 2017, six, 17, 16. You said you had some new, you, I, actually, this is a funny story. I hope we still have time. Uh, I went to your gym and these kids were doing this drill and I couldn't do it. I, I remember I was p- playing with Shelton 
<sighs> I was I was working out with Shelton, and Shelton was just a I, I don't know what was Shelton in college. No, he's he's done, he's done with college. Yeah. No, I mean no, I mean at that time, at that yeah. time he was yeah. was he in college still yeah, yeah. or. So he was still in college, and I saw some other younger, like, high school players doing that. And I just was like, I can't. I mean, if I want to compete at a higher level, I need to know these new things. It's just like a convention for me. And just my, you know, I mean, you didn't, I didn't know that for myself. I, you taught me that, to just continue learning, uh, continue wanting to learn, uh, relentlessly pursuing. But what that story was, they were doing it for the whole day. I mean, that two hours I was at, I think you – while we work out, you actually have a certain different pace with me. It's more of like, let's, let's do this set. Okay. He wants to talk. Let's talk. Cause he's tired. But those kids were going crazy hard. And I was like, man, I need to be on their level. And I mean, that's me at yeah. 13 years pro. Yeah. I mean, if you have to really like look at yourself and be like, yo, I'm not at par right now. And I'm glad you were, you taught me some new moves that I've never seen before. I never seen before, you know, going through the legs, between the legs, wrap, going over the cone, you know, one hop, two hop, and all those things. When I first saw it, I could have easily, you know, been a bit egotistical and say, I don't need that. I could have easily been like, nah, coach, I'm just going to stick with my pick and rolls and, you know, I'm just going to stick with my, this has been working for me for the last 13 years, but, or 12 years, but. I guess the bottom line is, yo, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to learn something new. Be open-minded and things will work out. I think after that, uh, I think you you knew it after that. I think I had a pretty good year after we worked out all the, all, all the, I think five, six times over the summer, seven times over the summer. And I still do those workouts now. It looks weird. Actually, I actually some of my teammates and some of my, the people that see me in the PBA, they'd be like, man, those drills are weird, man. Till they saw Kevin Durant do it. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh yeah, that's okay. But when I was doing it, they were like, man, that's some old shit. You can't be doing that. That's too old. Yeah. They're, it was so funny because you were looking at me and you were just like, man, we're going to be in forever if you're not going to finish. And I was just like, Coach Johnny, this is a new thing for me. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. But I mean, so... Yeah, hey, just be, just, you know, just be, that, that was my fresh outlook right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, man, well, you know, I appreciate you taking the time out, you know, the fresh outlook. I want to inspire, you know, I want to inspire, I want to motivate, I want to help. I mean, that, that's kind of like my, um, my lifelong kind of like motivate, my lifelong goal. Yeah, you know, not just basketball, but just, you know, people in business, like I said. I encounter them every day, and it's just uh, everyone got the everybody got the same um, struggles, but you know different journey, and so there's commonality. So for me to open it up, then and let people hear, it's important because uh, you know they're not alone. That's one, and then you know have faith in God, and then you know uh, I always tell people, man, stay humble, you know, keep keep hustling, and then you know stay stay true to to yourself. So all right, appreciate it, man. Um, um, Alex Kabagnot, um, any, any, any last shout outs of how the, um, you know, any Filipino, um, young ballers that want to, you know, reach out to you, get some training, get some, hopefully, um, additional knowledge. Uh, you know, actually, if you're, if you're young and you just want to be the best that you could be, just make sure you just continuously, continuously just grind and things will, things will happen for you eventually. I mean, uh, consistency killed curiosity and that in my opinion stick to the people always remember the people that was there for you because you know sometimes in the shuffle of where you are at, in life people forget who was there for them and who because you know when I was younger I always had you I felt like you were always my and I hope I hope I hope kids right now could find themselves what I found like a coach Johnny. So thank you so much. Thank you for always mentoring me and uh, appreciate for, for uh, being one of your guests at the Fresh Outlook Business. Uh, um, no, no, I'm talking about also too, um, you know, kids right now. I mean, obviously, uh, hopefully, you know, you, hopefully this is going to come out in your, you know, your social media and the kids that want to, you know, train with you and learn like, you know, the, the, the skills, you know, the, the, the knowledge, you know, the moves, the first step, you know, the, the, the last second heroics that you, that you, you they see on TV. I mean, like, <laughs> you want to, you know, just send them a message. I mean, you, you have academy, 
that you want to? Oh no, you know what? I I actually at the moment at the moment uh, I had the Alex Cabagnot Academy, Cabagnot Academy. I put that to to rest because I was with UP. I've been so busy with the whole three on three. Uh, actually, I didn't play in the three on three. I was coaching for three on three in the Southeast Asian Games. And I'm so fortunate to be part of that team, to be part of the uh, coaching staff of Coach Lonnie Maksanov and Coach Mo and all the players there. I've just been extremely busy, extremely, extremely busy. These kids out there, there's a lot of people that want to help them and there's a lot of platforms for them. And I would love to help them and just message me. I'll try to get to you as, uh, as much as possible. I'll try to show you a couple of things, but nothing formal right now. So I'm, right. I'm, I'm just going to be chilling for right now, brother. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thanks, Alex, uh, to Fresh Outlook. You know, you open up a lot of eyes and hopefully you inspire. You've inspired. You inspired me to continually to to help other kids. And then hopefully I get to, you know, be to, to be part of their journey to wherever it may be. So, um, again, thank you. You know, this is the Fresh Outlook Business Symposium. Johnny G, I'm out. <laughs>